The Mud Peddlers, a podcast where two nerdy ceramic artists share the behind the scenes of their worlds of clay. We're your hosts, Lindsay M. Dillon. And I am Dante of Earth Nation. Today we're going to be talking about prepping for the holidays. Yeah, prepping for the holidays is, is a real one for any person or crafter that's selling your work. It's it's pressure. Yeah, yeah. I feel like uh, I feel like there are many different elements that go into it. I thought, um, like when I was prepping, as I mentioned earlier, when I was prepping uh, questions for this episode, I was like, okay, we got to do like a what's your ideal holiday prep, and then yeah. what's the actual <laughs> yeah. holiday prep. So, what why don't we start with what if you could like, you know, fairy fairy godmother comes down and says you can design your year so that your holiday preparation season will look like this. What does it look like? And then, like, she would just punch me after I tell her. <laughs> like, no! <laughs> My perfect holiday would be this. Oh, that's nice, dearie. <laughs> that's what happens when you plan things. <laughs> um, well, it's a little bit difficult because I've never had the, the pleasure until this year of planning for the holidays. Usually I make stuff. I go to a venue such as, like, Sack Anime or Fanime. Yeah, yeah. And then I kind of, like sell my stuff and then I make more stuff and then I wait to the next table but this year since I have my own Earth Nation Ceramics website where I sell stuff I'm gonna have to kind of do what a lot of people on Etsy are doing and like have a promo code and 10% off or 15% off of these items and stock my store right before on like December 1st I'm planning on stocking my store this yeah, year okay. that is the plan for this year so this is my first time okay okay so so again like even though this is your first time like yeah. if you could if you could plan out next year what would be your ideal holiday setup for next year so I've been using my kiln for experiments and not being really serious with a lot of my stuff <laughs> okay I've been like I'm gonna develop new glazes and I've developed like maybe two or three yeah but realistically I could just like mix my Randy's red floating blue and do all the combos that I know work out and uh, are pretty yeah yeah and put them on my website so uh -huh. I don't have as much of a loss yeah or I could like do what a lot of other potters do that sell stuff and make the same cup over and over again and be like, cool, we have five of this and ten of this and five of this. Yeah, um, yeah. Which is what I'm kind of planning to do for next year. And pseudo this year, I have a good stock of about 100 items. Okay. But as far as an actual table goes, I'm going to bring like 40 items. Mm -hmm. As far as my website goes, I'm probably going to stock it up with about 40 items. Okay, so for 40 items on your website, 40 items on for like doing like a market. Mm -hmm. Next year, would you would you see yourself doing more than one market next year? Holiday I market? Yeah, oh, no, actually no. I don't like really yeah. being in person. No. I'm an antisocial extrovert. Like, <laughs> I'm comfortable with very few people, and I don't, you know, it's. Uh, I'm doing one this year. Yeah. I'm be behind a table. It's, yeah. Yeah. I just don't want to. <laughs> you know. I. You're I, way I more sociable you. than me. I think okay. So if like if I could ideally plan out my holiday prep season, like just looking at the number of like markets I would go to, yeah. I realistically probably would not do more than like two. Maximum, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, me same. Cause I like, I know there are some artists that will go to like a holiday event every weekend and oh my god no yeah no, well well it makes sense if depending on what your business model is like and like when you tend to get more money it makes sense to a certain degree but for me i i love christmas and i love the christmas season and i love like going on saturdays to like look at the pretty houses and the rich places that i could never afford to it live has nothing to do with jesus <laughs> Y'all bringing trees in, letting them die um, because of a pagan holiday I mean, it's that the church totally stole. <laughs> Point being, <laughs> I like being able to spend the holidays doing fun holiday stuff. Yeah. And I'm lucky enough that at least at this point, I can manage my holidays so that I can take a little bit of time off. So I'm not, I like, so again, ideally, yeah. I would do two, probably two events. Right. And earlier in the year, like probably around June or July, I would start developing new designs. Mm. And then because that normally takes me a while and that's kind of like a back burner project. Yeah. I would start developing new designs, kind of tease that they're, you know, ready in the next few months. Right. And then spend like August and September just cranking it out like making 
probably like 400 mugs I think would be ideal. For like the whole? For like the whole season, the yes. The whole kit and kaboom? The, yes, okay. everything. So enough for like a big Etsy update that I could, you know, start on Small Business Saturday. So yeah. that the Saturday after Thanksgiving would be like, okay guys, start of the holiday season. My Etsy store is open. I've got hundreds of mugs. Yeah. And then I would have a solid, basically a solid month. Yeah where people could could buy my work. And I would do that for two main reasons. First of all, to have just simply enough inventory to sell. Right. Second of all, because I still sell my work on Etsy and Etsy works a little bit like a social media site. It kind of does. It does. Yeah. So even if somebody didn't buy my work, because I would have work available in my store, my work would be more likely to show up on like Etsy search engine. Oh yes. So people could just find my work through that. You know, I had some difficulty choosing in between my website and Etsy. Because along, and I think I've talked to you about this before. Yeah, yeah. Etsy has such a large name with handmade crafts. Yeah. That people never ask you like, oh, what's your website? They go, yes. what's your Etsy? Yes. We should do we should do an episode where we talk about that because that's definitely a, a, a topic we could delve delve into deeply. Okay. Well, since we've talked a little bit about what our ideal, or I guess, okay, I'll ask, is there anything yeah. else you would add to well, like the ideal or any, well, the... What you, what you describe is kind of what I want to do, except for, so like, for example, I have a table coming up fairly soon. It's mm -hmm. November right now. It's on November 14th, right? Yeah. This episode will probably be out way after that, <laughs> right? That being said, I'm going to restock my store on December 1st, which gives people because I have two to three days shipping, like a good 20 something days mm. to realize I have a new stock. And that's yeah. my plan thus far. That being said, probably like you said, somewhere January, February, I'm gonna start revamping my glazes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm gonna start talking to Amico a little bit more. I'm gonna start using different tools. I'm gonna start designing, yeah. not, not really designing, but start getting stuff in the works that's not just next year. I'm like, hey guys, I have the same shit. Yeah, you yeah, know? that's that's something I really struggled with this year that I wish that I had done a little bit more is a little bit more of like new design development. Yeah. Because again, when I think about, okay, ideal holiday season, mm -hmm. I would want to have a bunch of new designs available for people. And that's not something that I have this year. Yeah. I was able to accomplish a lot of other stuff that I'm excited about, but I agree with you that the early part of the year is really nice for like redesigning. Cause no one expects from anything from you. Yeah. No one's like, are you going to do a holiday sale in January? You're like, no, it's over. You're yeah. late. Well, well, to some degree, though, what I feel like is weird, which both of us have experienced, is that because we have sold at Sac Anime and Sac Anime oh, Winter yeah. happens in January, for the last two years, I'd say, the holidays have actually taken a back seat to Sac Anime. I agree. Well, yeah, I don't I don't know if that's so much because of the timing mm -hmm. or if that's so much because of the culture, because I've been to so many arts and crafts tables where like a certain type of person will go looking like holiday shopping. Yeah. And I never sell as much as I do at like sack anime or fanime. Yes. And I don't understand why. But the main difference I've noticed is that the culture is so much more appreciative at the anime conventions of people who are like, oh my God, you put, you made a D20 cup. You made a dungeon master mug. I love that. I love D&D. Let me get this from you. Yeah. But like, like I've totally experienced that Karen at the other table who's like, why should I buy this? Yeah. Sell well, this to me. And I'm like, let's just get out of here. I feel like anime conventions work in this really interesting way as almost, they're like, it's like a filter. And again, that's also part of the reason why I tend to not really like doing very many of those holiday markets is because you're dealing with a wider audience, yes. which is good in, in, in some ways because you're, you know, exposing your, your work to new people. Yeah. But at the same time, it's like at anime conventions, especially because of the style of work that we're both in, the people who go to conventions, and I speak for myself yeah. as this, and we've probably mentioned this before, we go there as con goers yes. to buy shit because yes. we're excited about our fandoms. We bring like a couple hundred yeah. and then we look for stuff that we like attached to our fandoms and mm -hmm. go... That's it, money yeah. right there. And you don't feel bad about it because you're like, I know you probably made this by hand. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, that's part of what you're there to do. Whereas I feel like holiday markets, to some degree, people go there to buy. But at the same time, it's there is, I feel like, this more social element to it where it's yeah. like, you know, like I've I've had times where I've like gone to my friends and been like, hey, like, do you want to go like check out this holiday market? You know, assuming I'm not selling at it. Right. And it's less about going there to buy stuff and more about, oh, this is a way to like get out and enjoy the day and like yeah. do something together and look it's at some a local artists. Yeah, yeah. But it's not necessarily like I brought $200 and I'm going to go buy some shit, you know. No, it's, 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 anime it's, people are straight like that, though. Yeah. For sure. Uh, I, I'll admit to it, too. Yeah. 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 My first year at Fanime, I saved up for like a year and bought like $1,500 worth of stuff. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> at my very first Fanime. I oh, went, my God. 
overboard. Dude. I'm telling you. But then after that, I brought like two hundred dollars and didn't spend the, any of it. Yeah. And I was like, I kind of. I learned. I learned that like items don't matter as much as the experience of being there does. So by the time I was there, I was like, I don't really need a Buster Sword that's made of wood that's twice the length of my body. Unless you do, because low key, Cody and I, we want to make a weapons rack yeah. in our living room for all of like the cosplay weapons that we have. That makes sense. And so, I mean, that's the only way maybe you'd need a, a buster sword that's bananas big. Yeah. Since we have discussed what our ideal holiday situation would be like and some of the differences between like selling at holidays versus selling at post-holiday anime conventions. Yeah, anime conventions. Um, what people is, don't know what anime are like, what is with them in anime? I, what is this? I think that's probably some of our audience at least knows what an anime convention is. I'm I willing to so. bet. I'm willing to bet. So now that like, okay, so this is your first time doing a holiday market. You've kind of talked about like what you would want to do next year. Yeah. So what, okay. I guess I'll say the contrast I'm trying to pull is like expectations versus reality. Well, this is my first time doing it with yeah. my own website, with my own material. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, this yeah, is my yeah. first time really doing the thing because mm -hmm. I had a YouTube channel for like two and a half, three years yeah. until people bugged me to make a website. Now that I have a website, I'm like, well, it's holidays and I'm kind of expected to load the store right before the holidays. Mm -hmm. And if I don't, then I'll lose something i don't know maybe i have fomo like i'll either lose customers or i'll lose youtube subscribers i don't oh, have no idea interesting well like what do you lose from not updating your store during the holidays other than money yeah but i'm not like a money monger i'm not like yeah holidays yeah you know that's that's really interesting actually because that's one of the things that i've wrestled with a lot this year in particular mm. okay so this year has been weird for lots of reasons we survived Go the apocalypse we survived the apocalypse a little bit a little bit yeah yeah uh, since I'm applying to grad school this coming winter, making money has not been as high of a priority for me. Yeah. Also because of the blessings that are uh, COVID relief uh, unemployment benefits. True. So I feel this weird pressure, which I, I kind of, I finally kind of like dealt with it a little bit more a couple weeks ago because I kept thinking kind of like you were like, oh God, I have to do this. I have to have the discount code. I have to have like the yeah. big Etsy update, et cetera, et cetera. But I was kind of able to step back and go like, okay, worst case scenario, yeah. what's the worst thing if I have kind of a small December update? And I thought, okay, well, it's actually not that bad because my, that's not my main focus anyway. My main focus right now is getting in a few more sculptural pieces yep. so that I have a bigger portfolio to submit for grad school. So I'm having to remind myself that with all these pressures of the holidays, I have to remember, it's like, okay, what are my long-term goals with this? Right. And then how do I do that? But I guess one thing that I will say, because I have tried to do holiday markets before and like set things up for the holidays in certain ways. Yeah. If you don't mind, I can share expectations versus reality in terms of what's come up. Those are my favorites. Okay. All right. So no, go ahead. Yeah, please. <laughs> okay. Please okay. go ahead. I think the biggest thing that I run into in terms of like my ideal, what the plan would be for the holidays versus what actually happens yeah. is that what ends up happening almost every time, which is great in a lot of ways, but it's funny and ironic yeah. is that around September and October, when I would normally be like, okay, I got to start like making work for the holidays. Something else comes up. Of course. A couple years ago. It always does. Yeah. Yeah. And it's a good stuff. I mean, like, I think it was, what, two and a half, almost three years ago now, where I got the first contract with the Insight yeah. Coffee Roasters to make their serveware. I mean, that was freaking amazing. Like, of course, I'm going to put all my effort towards that. I think other stores know that this is the time in which they want to gear up for holidays. They just do it earlier than us. And yeah. we're an outlet for that, too. Because I'm, I'm having people come up, sponsor ideas, who are like, want to do a thing? And I'm like, there's something's in the air. Like, mm, yes, it has to be. Yeah, well, because we have to, there's a lot of prep work that goes into the holidays, and I feel like... It's like a month at least. Yeah, but a couple months. I mean, I think for me, like, I always end up rushing kiln loads in the last few weeks before, like, the holidays. Dude, you ever been in a table? You ever been in a, an anime table? Uh, whatever table, you ever been yeah. in a table? And, like, you got one load out, but you loaded another load the night before? Oh my god, yes! So you're... I yeah. hate that! <laughs> So much. I've literally, dude, no joke. It, it was too, it was, no, not last year. Yeah, I think it was last year where I was like, okay, I have been so stressed out yeah. that I would rather not do ceramics anymore than continue to have this level of stress because there were like three different events yeah. where I was literally unloading glazeware the night before the And it's event. like 300 degrees. Yeah, oh my God. And you're unloading the kiln oh. and you're like, if I don't get this out, I won't make money. Oh my and God. I'll be a failure. And you just, and you roll on the floor and you try not to think about it and you think about it oh and you try god. not to cry and then you cry a lot so much so <laughs> many so many tears oh my god yeah that 
that has been my reality too many times and that's why I keep every year I think I get a little better every year yeah I think but, you do too but yeah but with actually preparing more or learning what things to say no to I Le didn't learning to say no is important yes yes so oh god especially for events and especially for the yeah. holidays because there is this expectation that it's like oh money making time like gotta do this there's right. this pressure to like oh I have to do all the events actually funnily enough kind of segues into one of the things that I wanted to talk about which had to do with like how you decide what events to go to, not only just with what in-person like art markets to go to, like holiday markets versus anime conventions, but also the different ways that we can sell our art during the holidays. And with your experiences, my experience, like yeah. what we prefer. It's like, it's, it, it's like when you get on TV and you're like, together we have over 40 years of experience. <laughs> But really, you've just been doing your pseudo doing your job for twenty years each. Yeah. Um, no, for for me, it's more of a vibe. I like to meet the person who coordinates the tables, and then if they're cool with me and they're nice to me and they mm -hmm. know my body of work and they searched me out and they're like, we would love to have you here. Um, I'm like, cool. Let me. See. And if they invite me back next year, I'm so down for it. Mm -hmm. But every now and then, someone just grabs me. Like I just had to fill a spot. I don't care about. It. Like I don't care. Give me the money and then go away. They don't care about setting me up with a table. Mm. They don't want to introduce me to, you know what I mean? Like, it's just some, some of them, the coordinators are like, this is your spot. Hopefully you're okay with it. If not, if anything goes down, let me know. Mm. Here's our contact number. I've met, I've been to a lot of tables where they're like, give me 50 bucks and get out of my hair. I'm here to collect money from you and then give it to my boss and I get a percentage of it and you go away. Hmm, interesting. And you leave whenever you want, when you sell out, I don't care. But after you give them the money, it's your problem. Yeah. And I'm for me, that's, like, if I get that vibe, I'm like, nah, I'm just not gonna come back next year. Okay, so for you, it's more... It's a feel for it's, me. It's okay. Because the, money, like, the money's good, but it's not priority. Like, yeah. if I make $1,000 at a table in a day, and then I make 700 at another table for a different day for another table, mm -hmm. and the $700 one was nice to me, and they were appropriate, and they were, like very helpful and cordial with me, I'm going to the 700 one. Yeah. I'm not so much in need of money that I'm going to, like, sell my respect. <laughs> you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so in addition to the interpersonal relationship between, like, you and the person coordinating the event, do you think about, like, audience size? Do you think about events uh, in terms of, how do I say, like, um... Oh my goodness, I lost my train of thought because you're making a funny face. I'm sorry, no, <laughs> they, can't, they can't see it, but I took a sip of my new bubble milk tea, the secondary one. You know I got more than one, shut up. And like, it was so sugary, guys. Oh my god. And I made like weird pseudo fizz face and Lindsay's trying to keep her train of thought <laughs> while I have the like, I just smelled dog crap on oh someone's my. shoe face. Oh my god, it was a little happier than that. It was it's like, I smelled so cotton candy where it shouldn't be. It is so sweet. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god okay so guys what were we talking about okay events events and like how you choose them because like i think a lot about who's running the event where it's going to be what other artists are going to be there like especially a couple years ago when i was first trying to figure out what like yeah. how to do this whole like selling during the holidays thing i googled holiday markets sacramento and this uh, was in yeah. like and then i made a list we all start there yeah yeah i mean yeah. honestly like i still I still kind of do that with things sometimes. Like I'll just Google like, I don't know, setting up a holiday market. Yeah. Just, like I feel like reading just various like blogs and websites. Like even if you have some experience with something, just will sometimes you know you learn you learn something new. You you learn little tricks. Yeah. Or little pickups. Yeah. I've had a couple experiences going to really small events that weren't really worth my time. I guess. Agreed. I mean, like maybe I'd make a little bit of money, but again, it's like it's not just how long the event itself is. It's how long does it take to get to the event? You know, yeah. how many mugs do I need to have to sell at this event and have a full looking table? If I didn't go to this event, could yeah. I have a bigger Etsy update? Well, that's in that's interesting. Your point is interesting from my point of view as well, because I still have my nine to five job. Yes. So my immediate thought is if I take the day off work with my hourly pay oh. rate, am I going to get paid more than if I had gone to work? Yes. And if yes. that answers, if that's like no, or mm -hmm. if I'm not going to get a certain amount of publicity off of it that would make me like future money i'm not going yeah you know what i mean it's it's like i'm working for exposure but does that exposure equate to more popularity or money for my brand and if it doesn't then i just missed a whole day of work which is them's is bills mm -hmm. and them's keep me alive <laughs> yeah yeah you know for you it's i think for you especially because you're just a full-time potter now mm -hmm. it's very mathematical towards your pots 
It's like, do I have enough pots to make a full display for it to look attractive? How much can I sell? How much will I sell potentially? Will it be worth my time getting there for me? It's that on top of the fact of like, I'm missing work for this. Yes. You know, like if I'm not making more than X amount of dollars versus my job, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. I'm just not going to go. Yeah. I kind of appreciate that, like, sometimes you'll say, like, oh, I'm not about the money, I'm not about the money, but you are conscious of I'm very conscious monet- of it. Yeah, I appreciate, I kind of, I kind of like that. Because here's the thing, I've been said it before, I'm gonna done say it again, it's, n- like, having money is not everything, but not having mo- any money is everything. It, that's, put it on my tombstone. Yeah. All right, like, <laughs> <laughs> like, you don't have to have all the money in the world. After a certain amount of money, you're set, but also, if you're broke, you're broke, and you smell like it. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, I have a question for you that I have struggled with for quite some time. If you know something, especially for the holiday sale. Yeah. If you know something sells well, Mm -hmm. will you just make majoritively that in the interest of selling more stuff? Or are you willing to go, I want to make what I want to make and hopefully my fan base likes it. Because that's something regardless of the holidays that I struggle with a bit where I'm like, I know you guys like blue cups. (laughs) I can make blue cups all day. That doesn't satisfy me. Yeah. But I want to know from your point of view, since you're a, you are a full-time potter. Potter and hol- ceramic artist, because I sculpt too, Dante. You're right. You're completely <laughs> right. I saw this meme the other day. Have you ever seen that meme of that, that dude with the sunglasses and the baseball holding like this very attractive girl like by the shoulders? Oh, and he's yeah? like, you see, and he's just explaining something. Oh my God. I haven't seen that meme, but that sounds, I feel like I feel that. Oh but she's God. totally not into it. She's, she's gorgeous. All right. Yeah. She's like... An Instagram model. She's just looking straight ahead like she doesn't uh, care. And he's so into it. He's oh like, my God. this is what you do. Oh and it was one of them going, you see, potters are technically ceramic artists. <laughs> <laughs> but oh that doesn't God. mean that if you're a sculptor, you're if you're a sculptor, you're not a potter. But potters are also ceramic artists in the same way that sculptors are ceramic artists. So, oh, my God. And it's a whole list. And she's just like so uninterested. Oh, my God. Uh, if I find it, I'll show you guys. I'm sorry if I am doing the uh, ceramic Ceramics equivalent of mansplaining. No, because I've had no, because I've had that before. Like I've done that to like Abel before, and she's like, I don't care. Oh my god. I don't care. Yeah, we we as ceramic artists care. But, we care. Uh, yeah, we yeah. care a lot. Like yeah. if you call a sculptor a potter, they might flip their shit. <laughs> <They> might... <laughs> the thing is, I'm not in. Anyway, that's a whole. Yeah. See, we're about to do yeah. it. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. The question. The question. The question. What was the question? Oh man. <laughs> I don't know. Gonna, oh, no, it oh. was a, do, do you feel, do you feel, basically, do you feel pressured to make more popular items, especially during the holidays, because you know they sell more versus what you would, might want to make? Yes, I do. I... How much, pre- can I get a percentage? This year, I am making a lot more pieces that I know are popular okay. uh, than I have in previous years. Like, I'm probably doing 75%. 75%? Pieces that I know sell well, yes. And there's a couple different reasons that, I have, that I'm doing this this year. Okay. From selling at Sack Anime and Fanime, I have a sense of what designs work well right. and what designs tend to be sold last or right. I end up having as leftovers. Do you ever have a piece at a table that you you look at and you're like, someone's going to buy that first? And sure enough, they like, like, you know, the beautiful piece first. Oh, um, you know, I, I don't necessarily think I do because I tend to have a lot of repeat designs. Okay. So like if for my dragon egg mugs, like those, those pieces stand out very uniquely. Yeah. But like, it's not like out of the coffee stat mugs that I make, I have one that I'm like, oh, this one's the most gorgeous. Cause I tend to have yeah. multiples of that almost exact you same copies. Cup. Yes. Yes. I see. I see. Yeah. I'm doing more, more of like the more, most popular designs this year. Yeah. Partially because I'm getting to the point where I have so many different designs Uh. that I can't... Like, if I were to make one, even just one mug of every design in each of the colors, I, w- I would have over a thousand mugs. Really? I think so. Because I have, you know, all the D&D classes, yeah. all the D&D races, the stat mugs, the coffee mugs, the beer mugs, the, uh, you know, the, the supernatural, the face, yeah. hu- the alien face hug. I have got, I have so many different designs yeah. that it's like, I have to, I have to pick the more popular ones. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah. Are you into razoring those down at any, at any time? This is a retired design, and I'm just going to concentrate on these. Sort of. But I guess, yes, and over to answer your question, yes. I have some designs I thought they were going to do well, and then they just didn't. Right. Or I liked the idea, but I want to redo them. Like, I have a uh, Fujoshi stamp, mm-hmm. but I made it 
too small. Wait, there's so a that, symbol for Fujoshi? No, I made my own. Oh, cool. God. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I thought like, I was going insane. I hope that mine becomes the official one, but that's a that's a pipe dream. Point being, <laughs> um, to go back to your earlier question, that is a design that I have not made very many of. Okay. Recently, I've kind of, ra- as you say, razored it out, but yeah. not because I want to get rid of the design, more because I want to revamp it. Like, that's actually part of the reason why I started doing my made-to-order Etsy update system mm-hmm. was because I have so many designs that it's impossible for me to make so many of them. Yeah. So I sort of what I've done this year and I might continue this in the future is like when I do do Etsy, like regular Etsy update where I make the work and then put it on Etsy mm-hmm. is I'll tend to focus. I'll do like, oh, hey, this batch is going to be mostly Dungeon Master cups and some, you know, Fujoshi stamps or it'll be mostly D&D coffee stat mugs and then a few like alien face hugger mugs. So I'll sort of like rotate which ones I make. So what's like your most like your higher selling like, there has to be an item in your stock that you're like, this sells the most. Yes, I would say my my most popular designs are my coffee stat mug, my uh, tea stat mug, and then now the dungeon master mug has okay. become very popular. So mostly, like, my, my D&D-famed work is, like, it tends to sell really of well. Of course. It's, yeah. It's, yeah, geekdom is definitely coming out there. <sighs> I do the opposite of what you do. So I, I, I definitely have those people who want, like, the druid and the, you know, like, I used to make those. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I still do. I just don't do them as often. The issue is that people are, like... Like, de- in my Instagram, like, demanding them. <laughs> and I'm like, I might make two this year. Yeah. Maybe. Well, dude, that's why, I mean, if, if you ever wanted to consider it, like, that's the benefit of having, like, the pre-order thing. Because then people can see all the designs that you have. That's true. But you don't have to make all of them. So if someone wants you that. make them on hand. Huh? Exactly. If someone wants that one really specific design mm. that maybe doesn't sell very often, but that one person really wants it, yeah. then they can they can order that. Because I've, I've experienced that myself, like going to anime conventions. Sometimes I want a really specific art piece for whatever of whatever reason. But like you tend to see, because they sell well, you tend to see more broad, more general, mm. like, pairings, or the more popular pairings, I guess you say, or more yeah, popular, yeah. Uh, like, depictions of artwork. Of course. So having the made-to-order thing allows that one person who, like, wants the, like, the real specific. specific thing. Yeah. yeah, it allows them to, like, order that, but you don't have to navigate making that in your inventory. That makes sense. Beforehand, and then risk having that piece sit on your shelf for you've ages. To- you've totally sold me, actually. <laughs> yeah. To tell you the truth. No, so let me, let me update you guys, right? So on a previous episode, I had said that I felt like having your shipping included in the price felt dishonest. But, like, Lindsay and, like, seven other potters <laughs> online that I talked to were just like, no, here's the reasons why we do it. And it totally switched me. So now... My website just has the shipping included. Mm -hmm. Now everything is just like basically like X amount of dollars added on to the original price. Mm -hmm. This also comes in benefit for me because I gave my my customers the power to choose their shipping option. But the shipping options that were cheaper for them, because I thought I was being nice. I was like, look, it's $10 to ship instead of charging you $14 flat rate for everything. Yeah. If you pick this option... And it's specifically the boxes for a mug, and it's a smaller box, which is why I can charge you less. Mm -hmm. A lot of them just didn't read the instructions. They were just like, nope. So some of them would, like, buy three bowls and then pick, like, the mug boxes. Oh. And then I would just eat the costs of that. Yeah. Which I was like, well, that's my bad. I learned my lesson. So after changing it over, now that problem's fixed. Now every item you buy, regardless of how many boxes it's in, then you got charged for shipping anyway. Yeah. Yeah. But, like... Yeah, there's definitely items that people are... I I think, yeah, you totally sold me where I can just, like, look, if you want it, I'll make it. But it is commissions with extra steps. It it is, but it's a structured commission. Yeah. And for me, since you know, I think it was now now it'll be two episodes ago. Yeah. Um, by the time this comes out, the the episode that we did on commissions, it's like the biggest hassle with dealing with commissions, at least for yeah. me, is making sure that you're you you know what the your client wants yeah. because miscommunications lead to chaos. They have an image um, in their mind and you have to make that come alive. Yes, yeah. yes. Whereas if it's a design that you've already made and they're just specifically ordering that design, you're not really doing anything different than you would mm. normally do. True. And so it simplifies a lot of stuff. So those are the kinds of, even though it's like kind of a commission, kind of not, it's, you're right. It's, it's a easier. Stru- it's a structured commission. You're, yeah, no, you're absolutely correct. The, the way Lindsay has a way of selling me on shit. Because <laughs> I, I, 
already like Lindsay, but if a stranger came up to me and told her, told me the same stuff, I'd be like, you get away from me now. <laughs> <laughs> you don't have food and I don't like you. <laughs> I mean, admittedly, you're always the one bringing me food. So, yeah. you know, <laughs> I can't, I'm American. I can't sit down without eating. Oh, it's so good. <laughs> or, or, or drinking milk tea. Yeah. Which preach. is, I mean, this wait, is a wait. whole meal. This is the sound of magic. Yeah. It's 10 of you just wet your pants right now. <laughs> And then another 100 of you are like, I don't know what this is. Just just go to Google, go to images and type in B-O-B-A space milk tea. Mm -hmm. That's what we're drinking. I feel like they know. I feel like our Every episode. Knows. Yeah. yeah, hopefully they would know by now. Mm, we've, yeah. we've talked about it so much. We have. We're low-key obsessed. Let me look at the list of questions okay. so I can ignore them. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. So so we, we've already talked about what your perfect, like holiday sale would be if you had plenty of time to, like if you could mm. stop time like jojo style oh my god and then you like had all the time in the world to prep and then you could resume time we've talked about that mm -hmm. and then we've also talked we didn't really talk about what really happens <laughs> honestly <laughs> yeah because it kind of like look all your plans just don't work out like 80 percent of my stuff usually works out mm -hmm. that being said this is my first year trying to do it but it's also like i know that's i know that's not how it's gonna go like i'm not gonna upload my website and it's just gonna sell out the next day mm -hmm. you know what i mean yeah and like that's just not how it's gonna go some of that stuff's gonna sit in the store until what usually happens is somebody turns on, on my youtube channel and they see i have a website in the description below and then they go to the website and they go oh, i want to buy some of that you know what i mean that yeah. usually happens over time it's nice to have that it's like, it kind of is nice yeah but it's also like in my dream scenario i would load the store stuff would sell out the next day i would make more shit for the month yeah. and then next month we do it again yeah and nothing ever breaks in the mail yeah. <laughs> i don't see, have to travel nowhere see the secret the secret dante is to just do like me and not have enough inventory to last more than a day, and then it's great. It sells out in a day. But I, I do my stuff in loads. <laughs> no, you no, seem I mean... to do your stuff as like you go along. Mm. But I seem like I made a hundred items last month. Oh wow! And I put. 60, 70 in the kiln, maybe mm -hmm. three days ago, and I glazed maybe 30 this morning. Mm -hmm. So that's a kiln load is about 30 items for me because my I use I have bowls. I don't like if I was only doing cups, I would probably have the entire load. Mm -hmm. You know, so if you mix cups and bowls together, the most efficient way we would have two or three kilns and have one for cups and one for bowls and then load um, it one for cups, one for bowls. You would be saving a lot of time and money, but it's just, it's never the way it works out. But I think that's kind of the failure of my holiday season is just not mathing everything out. I just kind of make what I think people want. <laughs> and then I, yeah. I do have to start doing what you're doing, though. I do have to start getting back on the dungeon master and the, the nerdy stuff and the <laughs> druid and the tank and the... Because well, people want that a lot. And yeah. I, I just I stopped making them because I was like, eh, was, I don't know. Didn't want to corner myself, but also it's I can make more shit. Well, I mean, I think what's also good to recognize is that for a long time, also one of your priorities was making your own glaze. And you did that, dude. Like, that's, that's awesome. That's true. So, for a good four months, I was like, I'm going to make my own glaze. So I, I think that's, I don't know, at least I say this to you because I know I beat myself up for stuff. It's like, I didn't do this and this. But it's like, I didn't spend most of August and September making holiday inventory because I was invited to be a part of an art show where I made three sculptures. Right. So it's like, I beat myself up for not having the inventory for the holiday stuff, but it's like, I'm trying to remind myself, okay, I didn't do that, but I did make three sculptures. Right. So for you, it's like, maybe you didn't like make some of the designs, like, you know, the tank and the DM and the, the Dungeon Master cups, yeah. but you made your own glaze, like two of them, right? Didn't you make two glazes? You did uh, the crystalline glaze and then... Technically, I made three different crystal glazes. But like I'm still figuring it out, but that's I, interesting. I do absolutely need to get back on the like like all right time to sell some dungeon master shit <laughs> I feel like that's that kind of constant back and forth that we experience as artists like the the line between Innovation and production because it's like the production allows us the time and money to continue to innovate Yeah, but like I tend to have a harder time Setting aside time for innovation as much as I want to do these things it's really easy to get into the, at least for me, yeah. it's easy to get into the groove of producing things where yeah. I just, cool, I'm gonna sit down, I'm gonna throw on some podcasts, I'm gonna throw some mugs, and the next day, cool, I'm gonna put on a podcast and trim some mugs and attach some handles and stamps. And yeah. then I'm gonna glaze, you know. You I think know. it's more like, while I'm doing a thing, regardless of whether it's productive or not, I mm -hmm. feel like I could be more productive 
You know, like, oh, I'm glazing, oh, but I could yeah. be making Dungeon Master mugs. I'm making uh, Dungeon Master mugs. Or I could be experimenting with crystal glaze. You know, it's mm -hmm. while I'm doing one productive thing, my brain goes, but you don't have enough. There's not enough sunlight in the day to do the other thing. Yeah. Maybe that's another episode that we could do is talking about, like, how we deal with goal setting and how we set goals. I yeah. I think it would be an interesting... I think we touched on that on another, on another episode of the podcast where it was like, we make times for ourselves. We say, by this date... And then we don't follow that. Yeah. <laughs> and, then yeah. We, and then we don't. Well, for, for many good and different reasons, of though. Course, you know, yeah. I mean, because those like those goals that we set up could be like some other opportunity that's really good could intercede. All right. Do you want to uh, do you want to call it? Yeah, that was a that was a good one. That was cool. Oh, good timing. The lawn dude just came by. Do yeah, I noticed the lawn dude was getting closer and closer mm. and closer. And I was like, oh no, that's gonna catch the audio. But we're done. We're done now, lawn guy. Do you hear me? That's it for today. Thank you for listening to The Mud Peddlers with Lindsay M. Dillon and Dante of Earth Nation. Want to say hi and see what Dante and I are working on in our studios? Check out the show notes for links to our websites and social media below. You can find me at lindsaymdillon.com. That's L-I-N-D-S-E-Y-M as in monster, D-I-L-L-O-N.com. And on Etsy, Instagram, and Facebook at Lindsay M. Dillon. And you can find me at Earth Nation Ceramics. It's spelled exactly how you think it's spelled, but you can also find me on my Facebook fan page and Instagram at the same name at Earth Nation Ceramics. If you enjoyed hanging out with us today, or you have a question or topic you'd like us to discuss, take a second to rate and review the Mud Peddlers in Apple Podcasts. It helps our podcast reach new listeners, and we really appreciate the feedback. Thanks again, and we'll catch you next time.